I love driving up from the Mohawk Trail State Park side. With the river next to you and the trees changing colors on either side. The Mohawk Trail's highest point at just under 2,300 feet is Whitcomb Summit in Florida, the western Massachusetts town of Florida, that is. We look out at the east all the way to Mount Monadnock in New Hampshire. I think it's a pretty special place. It's a lot of big sky. And one thing Stella Downey owns the Blue Vista Motor Lodge perched atop Whitcomb Summit. She bought and gut renovated this historic 17 room hotel, opening it in 2023. Everyone has a view. All the rooms face out the same direction. I wanted the rooms to feel serene, clean, clean lines, and not to compete with the beautiful view because that's really what it's all about. Another landmark is Steps Away, the Elk on the Trail Monument. It was put up by the Benevolent Order of the Elks as a World War II memorial. This summer it had its 100 year anniversary and so lots of people came out for that. If Downey looks familiar, that's because Chronicle has met her before. She owned Stella Bella Toys in Cambridge and later opened Sky Zone, an indoor trampoline park in Hyde Park. If I could draw a through line between those projects, I think there's two things that come to mind. Um, it's a little bit about like joy and connection, right? That same philosophy applies to the Blue Vista Motor Lodge with its misty mornings and epic setting. I think I came out of the pandemic and thought I want to feel, you know, rested and relaxed and the sort of different kind of joy. And I felt like when I came and looked at this view, that was the feeling that I got. And so I really wanted to provide that for other people. A 22 mile drive east on the Mohawk Trail brings us to the village of Shelburne Falls. I feel so lucky to have landed here. You actually have to drive off of Route 2 to come into town. You really do get a feeling of kind of an old village charm. In recent years, Shelburne Falls has become a favorite location for movie shoots. Tourists trickle into the area to shop, eat, and stop by the dam. On view here are 14,000-year-old potholes formed by pressurized granite. The best known attraction, however, is the Bridge of Flowers. Built in 1908 as a trolley bridge, it's now an elevated garden. It's probably an easy 100,000 visitors a year. Carol DiLorenzo is the bridge's head gardener. It was abandoned, except that it did carry the water main across to the other side of the bridge, so it was kept intact. In the 20s, Antoinette Burnham said to her husband, this old bridge can grow weeds, it can grow flowers. So this is one of our last blooming perennials of the season. It's a, a Japanese anemone. De Lorenzo admits it's impossible to choose a favorite blossom. And it's like, you're the beauty, you're the best beauty, you're the belle of the ball. I would say that for our late summer garden, it's the dahlias. A former landscape designer and farmer in the Boston area, De Lorenzo's design challenge here is working with only 400 to 600 feet of space. Everything is very close. I have to pick plants that can be viewed up close without <laughs> looking too shoddy or raggedy. Throughout the year, volunteers work hard to maintain the Bridge of Flowers, which is owned by the Shelburne Falls Area Fire District. The bridge closes in autumn of 2023 for a nearly $2.5 million repair job. This bridge has been a fortress. It's gone through the hurricane floodings. Work will reinforce the bridge and improve drainage before it reopens in late 2024 or early 2025. That's plenty of time to envision new design ideas that can bloom where they're planted. The plants are my palette, you know, the bridge is my canvas. I get to see how much people really appreciate a garden. And I've been to that bridge many times. It's beautiful. Mm. And back to Windcombe Summit uh, in Florida, there has been an inn at the very top since 1914. Right, there was also a restaurant that burned down though in 1938. There were a bunch of cottages that were removed in the 60s and now the Blue Vista Motor Lodge, it's been renovated, but it only has 17 rooms. So it still kind of has that historic feel. All right, coming up, going to town in Greenfield.